Welcome to the Millennial Mind on ThinkTech, and I'm your host today, Carol Mon Lee. Our show is called The Formation of One Millennial, and we're going to talk about the varied influences and experiences affecting a Hawaii young millennial. If you want to a ask a question or participate in the discussion, you can tweet us at ThinkTechHI or call us at 808-374-2014. Our guest for today's show is Anna Yor who is summer interning at NAI Cheney Brooks. She's a junior at Harvard College and a graduate of Yelani School. We'll explore her combination of interests, including academic, athletic, and community, and whether it represents and reflects her generation. What skills and values do you develop in a world of contradictions? What experiences have helped form your views? So welcome to the show, Anna. Thank you so much for having me. We're so glad to have you. Well, I know you don't speak for all millennials, mm -hmm. and uh, you were born in the late 90s. Right. So you're what we call a young millennial. Um, the millennials, though, however, are the largest living generation in the United States at this point, over 80 million strong. Did you mm -hmm. know that? I did not. <laughs> <laughs> and prior to that, it used to be the baby boomers, my mm -hmm. generation. And of course, many of the baby boomers are now parents to millennials. Right. So um, you are from Hawaii, right? And uh, now you're at Harvard. You graduated from Yelani. Mm -hmm. So you decided to come back to Hawaii for summer. Yeah. So I thought this was probably my last summer. I could had the opportunity to come home, um, as in next summer I'm trying to work abroad, um, somewhere on the East Coast. And it's been really great being home, um, spending time with my little sister, who is a, going to be a senior at Yolani, and spending time with my parents, because I don't get to see them often during the school year. And also going to the beach and eating local food has <laughs> been really fun. Um, and I'm also working at NAI Cheney Brooks, which um, is a commercial real estate company here in Hawaii. And my parents actually um, set me up with the managing director, Joe Haas, and I've been working alongside him all summer. So what kind of work did you do? For, as an intern? Um, I've done various things, um, attending his meetings and going to property showings and um, writing press releases. Um, What's your major at, at Harvard? Has this been uh, part of the experience to help you um, get more uh, uh, involvement in, in what you're actually mm -hmm. going to major in? Yeah, so my major is cognitive neuroscience and evolutionary psychology. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I originally came into Harvard pre-med. Um, both my parents are doctors and my older sister is attending medical school this fall. So I kind of thought that was like the default and what I would do. But I ended up, my f um, favorite class at Harvard was intro to psychology. And I think that's what really um, kind of changed my direction away from medicine and into psychology. And I also joined um, Harvard Women in Business, which has really opened my eyes to the whole business side. and. Um, how I can potentially use psychology to kind of make my way into that field. Ah, and so that's why this summer doing more business rather mm -hmm. than medicine or psychology. Right. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, now you're going to go back to Harvard. Right. And what kind of classes are you going to be taking? What 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 areas outside of uh, classes too are you involved in? Um, so at Harvard, it's a liberal arts college, so we take a lot of different classes um, having to do with culture and um, religion and very other various other types of classes. So I think this um, semester I want to take an economics class. Um, they have this really cool class called Economic Sociology, and it's, there's a lot of writing, and which I love, to, I love to write. So I'm really excited for that. And just kind of exploring my interest in the upper level um, psychology classes. And I think I'm really excited for the classes, the so, upper level classes that I so can So long take. term, do you see a combination then? You said, uh, mentioned psychology and how mm -hmm. it might affect business. So is that right. beyond college, what would you want to do with uh, that, those skills and interests? Psychology doesn't give me the technical skills in business. Um, and I am at sort of a disadvantage from other kids at schools that study like marketing or finance or that's their major. Um, but I do think psychology gives me a broader perspective on just how we work and how we interact, which I think is really important to any field that I go into. And I think that um, those technical skills that I can learn on the job, and I think it'll help me um, 
just have a broader perspective and maybe be able to understand the people I work with better and the clients that I work with. I see. Well, you know, the show The Millennial Mind, uh, we're not saying that you, of course, represent all millennials, right. but the millennial generation, of course, is uh, so important and vital right now. Of course, we all know Mark Zuckerberg is mm -hmm. kind of probably the most famous millennial. Probably. <laughs> right, who's changed the face and Facebook of, <laughs> of all of us. So how has technology and media and communications, how has that influenced you? Because right. basically started with, uh, or at least moved great strides with, with Mark and your generation. Mm -hmm. So I think my generation was definitely born with it. And it, um, as we're growing, technology is also growing. And um, from a personal experience, I think that technology, especially social media, has a very good and bad side. Um, I think. What do you use in social media? Are you um, one of those who is on everything? Um, pretty much everything except for Twitter. Um, I have a Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. Um, those are the, my main three things I use. And I think they're all dip for different purposes, which I like. And um, But I think there's a fine line between overuse and using it, using it smart, smartly and um, kind of using it as a way to express yourself and connect with friends. And then I think there's also a pretty dark side of social media, which involves comparing yourself to others and mm -hmm. bullying, bull cyberbullying, mm -hmm. bullying, using it as a distraction. Um, and I, I went through like times where I was just on social media all the time and I would just compare myself to um, other girls that I would see on Instagram or Facebook. and it does nothing but put you down, and I think. Um, so, so was this during when you were there. in college, or were you in um, high school? Mostly high school. I think college has kind of. I've definitely used social media less for comparing myself and more for connecting with um, other college-aged people and my friends at home, and also my parents. Um, I think the older generations use Facebook more than they do Instagram or Snapchat. Um, so I think Facebook is a great way for me to connect to my parents and my grandparents even and my parents' friends while I'm away at college because I think we use it, Facebook is more of an informational, um, like just keeping up with everyday life, like where your child is going to college or like where your vacation, family vacation is. And I think Instagram and Snapchat is more of a day-to-day, -day, like not necessarily very important things you're posting there. I so, see. Yeah. So how about, well, you, you have two sisters? Yes. Uh -huh. And parents and grandparents. So how mm -hmm. have you seen, and then of course I'm sure you have friends and colleagues both at school, both at undergraduate and, grad, right. uh, and uh, high school. So how have you seen social media affect them? Have you seen it evolve like it has evolved for you in terms of being more, um, trying to pick the more, uh, the better uses of it rather than absorbing your time to be taking you down? Yeah, I think the older generation, I think, uses it much more wisely than the younger generation because they know what life was like without it and they don't rely on it to um, connect with other mm -hmm. people. And they, I guess, necessarily don't trust it as much as we do, I think. Um, so I find like with my older sister, I'm sorry, my younger sister and her friends, I think they're on social media more than myself and my older sister. And I think they're even more connected to it than I am. Um, so I think they almost have a higher potential of using it in the wrong way, which is kind of scary, but I think there's just a fine balance between. It's learning to, yeah. yeah. How do you get your news? Do you use it for news? Um, occasionally, mostly Facebook for news. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you read on Facebook that gives you daily news? Uh, no, not daily news, okay. more like just interesting articles that uh -huh. my parents will share or like uh, friends at Harvard would share. Uh -huh. um, I also try to like read the Wall Street Journal every once in a while and things Online. like that. Online? Um, yeah, on the app. Mm -hmm. Oh, on mm -hmm. the app. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is that how you, and what about your sisters? Do you, do you all get the news um, the same way? You don't buy hard copy newspapers? No. Um, I Have you ever my seen parents one? Do. <laughs> I've seen one. Um, I don't think my parents buy hard copies either. They either watch the news, the nightly news, or um, Read it online. What about yeah. reading uh, other other types of material for entertainment or for, you know, leisure reading? 
Um, if I do read books, which is, <laughs> I don't really have much uh, free time to do that, but I'm trying to get that into my schedule. But if I read books, I usually read, read on my iPad. Um, I really don't have any hard copy books. And, and do you find you're interested in fiction, autobiographies, biographies, oh. um, fantasy? I like sci-fi actually uh -huh. a lot. Um, I have kind of an interest in um, astronomy and ah. kind of an outside interest that um, I don't take any classes for it or anything, right, but right. it just kind of interests me. So. Yeah. So is that something that you find your fr among your friends? That is that the common way then for them to read, uh, to either gather their news or to keep up in um, uh, community and social right. and political events? Yeah, for sure. Um, we ha at school we have the Harvard Crimson, which is a famous um, paper. Daily, that, yeah, yeah, school newspaper, student yeah. newspaper. Mm -hmm. So they have hard copy, and I get emails every day that have um, the articles and. My roommate is actually um, the like senior editor for it, mm -hmm. so she kind of shoves the articles on, especially that she reads, uh, that she writes or edits onto uh -huh. her roommates, and we read that a lot together. <laughs> Great. Okay, well we're going to take a short break, okay. Anna, and we are with my guest Anna Yur, who is here on the Millennial Mind, and we'll be right back. We have this crazy thing going on today. I was just walking by and all these DJs and producers are set up all around the city. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. There were a lot of people that claimed they had no musical talent and then sat down and kind of played some really nice sounds. So we do it. Welcome back. This is Carol Mon Lee on the Millennial Mind with my guest, a uh, junior from Harvard College and a graduate of Yolani School, Anna Yur. And Anna has just been interning this summer at NEI Cheney Book. So welcome mm -hmm. back. Thank you. Just during the break, we talked a little bit about one of the characteristics what, that one of our other um, uh, former interns who was here at uh, Think Tech, uh, mm -hmm. a, a millennial, mentioned to me was that she felt her generation was characterized by the amount of stress that she felt. And I asked you whether you feel that kind of stress or what kind of stress you might feel. Mm -hmm. I've definitely felt a lot of stress, especially in the last couple of years, um, going to Harvard and having to balance the rigorous academics and athletics and social life has been a, really a challenge and there are times where I am really stressed if I have a paper due and I finish practice late or things like that. Um, but I think overall my generation, well speaking just for myself, yeah. um, I kind of get stressed about the future and where exactly I, I know, don't know exactly I see myself, um, where there's a career, like where I want to live and I think especially at Harvard where I find a lot of the students know exact, they think they know exactly where they want to um, work and live and what exactly they want to do with their major. I think it's very stressful to not know that and I have to remind myself that it's okay not to know. And mm -hmm. um, But I think comparing myself to others and mm -hmm. just being unsure about the future is a so big stressor. Is the uh, uncertainty about the future any uh, related in any way to our current political environment? Mm. For me, not necessarily. I think uh, the stress about the future is just not knowing exactly where my passion lies and not being and not being exactly sure what industry that is in and if I'm going to run out of time trying to find it or um, I guess just how competitive um, it is to get a job and 
I see. Things like that. Well, we talked about, I know that you um, actually have explored lots of different things. And in, was it in high school that you went to Cambodia? Yes. Um, it was in my junior year I went to Cambodia over um, our spring break with my family and the Rotary Club of Honolulu. And what did you do there? So we spent about 10 days helping to build a school in rural Cambodia. Um, we would like help build um, a certain building within the school and then interact with the children. There were a lot of um, Hawaii kids on that um, trip and while the, um, I guess our parents were building, we would play volleyball with them or like uh, teach them how to play sports or things like that, which was really fun. So did it change your view of the community, the world? Uh, how did it affect oh, you? Oh, for sure. Um, how, did it, how did it affect you? I think that was one of the most eye-opening experiences I've had so far, just from just realizing how lucky we, lucky we are to have clean water, air conditioning, just mm -hmm. um, Have you education. maintained ongoing, whether it's uh, an interest in the area, or how have you used that to maybe form or, or uh, help you decide what else you might be interested in doing? I haven't necessarily maintained um, a special connection with that school in Cambodia, but I think it has overall changed my mindset. Um, and just whenever I'm stressed or ha like <laughs> worried about something, I just think like how lucky I am to even have like these stresses. Like if it's I'm a luxury worried, to have a stress. A, it is a luxury sometimes <laughs> to have a stress. Um, just thinking about these kids that have nothing and they're still happy, they're smiling, they're playing with their friends and things like that. Um, I think it really keeps me grounded going back to that experience. Right. I know you mentioned volleyball. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you played volleyball in high school? Yeah, I've played since I was 10. Uh -huh. Are you playing now at, yeah, at Harvard? Yeah, I play at Harvard. Mm -hmm. And what kind of a team is that? Is, is that the intramural team? I don't really uh, it's know. It's a varsity team. The varsity yeah. team. Mm -hmm. So that means you go and compete with other schools? Right, we're in the Ivy League division. So, uh -huh. um, What position do you play? I'm a defensive specialist. Uh -huh. um, here I was I've been an outside hitter all my life because I'm considered on the taller side here. Um, but in Hawaii, right? In Hawaii, are. yes. Um, but at school, <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually the second shortest, so I don't play front row anymore. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about attitudes, maybe both mm -hmm. yours and maybe your sisters as compared uh -huh. to maybe your, your parents and other generations. Do you consider yourself more liberal, more conservative, mm -hmm. and uh, how do you view the current political environment in terms of enabling you to do what's best for your community and, and yourself? Well, Harvard is definitely one of the most liberal places <laughs> in the United States. Um, and I think that has really shaped my opinions, um, whether politically or in other um, areas. And I don't um, play that much close attention attention to politics because I'm busy with other things and it's just not it doesn't interest me as much as other things do. Um, are there a lot of demonstrations? Do you get involved in? I know there are some, mm -hmm. um, but uh, is that something that you've been involved in? I've never been involved in a demonstration, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I do. Is there pressure for students right now at college to do things like that? Sign petitions, wave signs. Mm -hmm. March? I think there is. I, um, I personally don't take part in that, but that doesn't mean I don't have, hold those views. Um, I'm just, I ha there haven't been really been much at Harvard. I, see. I think there's been more at other schools, but um, people definitely um, voice their opinions on social media too when I take part in that also. Uh -huh. So social media, let's go back to social media because, you know, we talked about, you know, Mark Zuckerberg and, and, um, and the, uh, uh, the major uh, contributors to our economy right now seems to be those who are using the uh, internet and uh, the developers of Airbnb and all mm -hmm. these, you know, things are all from the millennial group. Right. Right. So as an entrepreneur, do you see yourself uh, or your friends or your um, your siblings in that role as are those at Harvard uh, getting more into the uh, entrepreneurship model as opposed to community work, teaching, science. I guess science is, is it can be right. entrepreneurial. Um, 
I personally am not an entrepreneur, I would say, but I do see kids at Harvard um, kind of, especially computer science majors, um, building off of like what they see um, Mark Zuckerberg do and things like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I do think that our generation is um, using technology to market better to people and kind of do like the simple easy work that um, people used to do either by hand or using slower uh, computer programs but now we have ways to make that a lot quicker so we can focus our um, strengths on other things instead mm -hmm. of doing that boring work on the <laughs> computer. Um, so I think that's the direction I see a lot of um, millennials going is just using the technology to make easier things easier and quicker and um, but I don't think technology will ever really replace um, the human interaction and especially with my sister going to medical school um, people always like come up to her and tell her that oh we'll, we won't need doctors anymore Rob robots, robots are going to take, take <laughs> over um, I don't believe that I yeah. think robots will help us make more precise incisions and things like that but we will always need human minds and that human interaction. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So, um, what what has formed your different your values? Do you think over the years? Because um, one of the f defining events of of the last few years, of course, was the two thousand and eight recession, mm -hmm. and all that meant for the economy, um, uh, jobs, and um, you know the future for a lot of people. So, has that been something that you find that you were in? What? When you were in grade school. Yeah, yeah. I was little. <laughs> um, I think my family was, um, I think in terms of that, my parents are both um, very successful people and they've worked really hard. And I think having them as role models has really helped me to kind of shape my values. And I think the mentors and coaches that I've had um, have really helped me with that too. And I think that um, as opposed to, sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> well, uh, we we're talking about values. Values, and, and okay. What, what might have changed, and you, of course, mentioned your parents and mentors, uh -huh. and I do want to talk about your mentors right. in life, you know, who have been your mentors in addition, of course, to your parents and teachers. Mm -hmm. But any particular mentor or group of mentors who stood out for you as helping you define basically what, you know, your who you are? Um, I think my coaches definitely, I think sports has taught me more than I have learned in any classroom. No kidding. Um, to be honest. This is the volleyball, volleyball coaches? Volleyball, yes. Uh -huh. um, I've played with a bunch of different teams and a bunch of different players and I think that has um, showed me how to interact with people and how to be respectful of other um, people and how to work well as a team. I think that's important in anything that we do and also coaches have had a huge impact on me and I used to um, come home and cry if like my coach would yell at me or give me constructive criticism when I was younger and now I'm like thankful for that because I know I, taking the um, criticism well is one of the best skills that I've learned so far and I think that coaches are great because they're only trying to make you better they don't really benefit from telling you like to do a certain move or like have a different mindset so they're all they're really doing it for you and you just need to realize that and then be coachable so okay so are you also uh, teaching sports are you involved in as a coach or as I am a mentor? not um, I did in Cambodia a little but that was the extent to which I've mm -hmm. done that mm -hmm. but I'm very open to volunteering and for um, things like that I just haven't really had the opportunity yet yeah so okay so we've covered your your sports and your mm -hmm. some of your community activity and your courses at, at Harvard. Right. And what else are you looking forward to when you go back to school? Are you going to be doing more internships like the one you just did this summer? Um, I unfortunately can't do an internship during the year, but next year I hope to um, get an internship in either marketing, banking, or consulting. Um, would you come back to Hawaii? I'm not sure um, if I would next summer. I'm looking to be in New York or okay. a big city where I can kind of grow more. Okay. But, yeah, I will definitely miss Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we've been speaking with millennial 
Anna Yur, who is a junior at, in, rising junior, rising, rising yes. junior <laughs> at Harvard College, graduate of Iolani School, where she was on the volleyball team, and uh, just finished completing an internship at NAI Cheney Books. So although Anna does not represent the entire millennial generation, she is a wonderful representation of someone who has used the opportunities that she's received, the education she received, and the, um, the values of, I'm sure, a strong network of people and friends and family. So thank you so much for coming, Anna. Thank and we you wish you the best me. next year. Thank you so much. And come back when you graduate, <laughs> OK? I will. I will. All right. This has been Carol Mon Lee. Uh, this brings us to the end of the show. We hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, our guest, Anna Yor from Harvard College, we've been talking about the, the formation of one millennial and young millennials on the way to saving the world. Thanks to our production engineer, Ray Sangalang, our floor manager, Robert McLean, and all the people who care and contribute to our ThinkTech productions. If you want to see the show again or go to, uh, go to thinktechhawaii.com or youtube.com slash thinktechhawaii, where there will be a link to more shows just like this one. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Aloha. <laughs>